I've got two computers, and I've got two copies of Windows. It's time to do some installing. Hello everybody and welcome to Tech Uploaded. I'm Chris and today, yes, it is finally time to do the AMD and Intel budget gaming build Windows installations. Now, surprisingly, I've had quite a few people ask me recently, what is the process I use to do a Windows installation? Obviously, I do them a lot. So I thought, what better time than now to step through a couple of Windows 8.1 installations? So what I'm going to do is walk through the entire process is from getting the install started to actually partitioning your drives in the installation. So if you've got an SSD and one or more mechanical drives, you can get those set up so they're ready to go when you boot into Windows. And then once you do get there, how to go about locating your drivers and the order in which to install them, because it does matter, and it does vary a little bit between Intel and AMD. So really, this is just an exercise in showing that in Windows 8.1 installations can be super simple. You just follow a few simple rules. And actually, it's really not all that time consuming anymore, especially compared to how it used to be in the Windows 95 and Windows 98 days. So let's get started. All right, Windows install time. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that uh, you can boot from your optical drive. So what you wanna do is hit any key when that comes up and then sit back and relax and give Windows a minute to queue itself up. All right, so we are in. So just select your language, time, currency, and keyboard input method that you need or prefer, and then hit install now. A few more things are going to update at this point or load, I should say, but at this point you need to get out your CD key. And if you have the OEM version, uh, man, is it hard to read on the 8.1 disc or sleeve that they're shipping the disc in now. So I actually have to use a flashlight to be able to read mine. So I'm gonna put it in now. All right, as long as you enter the correct key, then you can move on with the install. So you have to accept the license terms. It's all very generic stuff right here. Now here's where we have two choices. You need to make sure you make the right one if you have more than one drive especially. So select custom, and you'll see here that I have my solid state drive is drive zero, and my mechanical Western Digital or WD Blue as they're going these days, sitting there is drive one. So what you wanna do is first hit new on the drive that you wanna install Windows on, and it will say that Windows might create additional partitions for system files, and that's fine. And I found this varies. Sometimes it just does one, sometimes it does more than one. So I don't know, I don't know what the, how it determines that, but this is what I'm used to seeing, just doing a system reserve, so it's normal. And then uh, for drive one, I'm gonna go ahead and hit new, apply, and then go ahead and hit format. All right, so you've got a partition and you've got it formatted. You wanna go ahead and make sure you select back onto your SSD, and if you don't, it's gonna install Windows on the wrong drive. So select drive zero on a second partition. You wanna look for the, the biggest one there and then hit next. Now, this is the point where uh, you might wanna go make yourself a cup of coffee or tea or go eat something, maybe hit up some YouTube, because this takes a while. All right, everything's finishing up here, so now you're ready to do a restart. So it's gonna give you the option to either restart within 10 seconds or let it do it itself. I always like to try to beat the clock, shave that nine whole seconds off of the build experience, the install experience. Which I guess the install experience is kind of a build experience. All right, so once that's done, Windows is pretty much actually installed. Now it's just gonna go through and configure itself. So you're gonna watch the little dots spin around for a minute. And at this point, if you want to go ahead and take out your disk, you can do so. Because the computer is done with it. Okay, once Windows is done doing all of its fun stuff in the background, it's going to take you to the personalized screen. So you need to give the computer a name and pick your color scheme if you would like. I usually just leave it on the default. I'm okay with that. So I'm going to call this one AMD Gaming. And then hit Next. All right, you can either use Express Settings or Customize, and I like to customize because I like to turn some things off on this screen. Now, give your computer a name. I'm not going to use a password for this particular machine because it's, we're just using it for fun, so unless somebody breaks into my house, then I would have a problem. So I've always found this screen to be very Xbox One-ish, the way it floats through everything. Go figure, Microsoft, huh? And boom, you are at the desktop. Now I found that the 
my AMD builds tend to drop me on the desktop and my Intel builds drop me into the tile interface or they used to call it Metro. I don't know what they're calling it these days, but eh, desktop's what I like anyway. So there's a few things that I do right away when I get to the landing screen. Number one is I right click and I go to personalize, change desktop icons and I add computer. And there you go, that's what I'm talking about. Then I go down here and I go to properties and I go over to navigation and I make sure this is checked, which it is. Again, for some reason on the AMD builds, this always seems to check by default. And then I actually uncheck both of these things so that I don't accidentally queue up some charms. Remove that from the taskbar. And then you'll notice I don't have any internet. Well, I have a solution for that. I bought a $12 USB wireless end adapter. It's, I'm not in my office right now because it's uh, finishing up my desk build in there actually. So I'm uh, in an area of the house where I don't have uh, an ethernet jack available. So in order to demonstrate the driver downloads, I need some internet. So I'm gonna go get that card now. All right, so I have plugged in that device. So now what I'm gonna do is check my device manager and I should have an unidentified device. And I do USB 2.0 WLAN. So I've got my wireless and I've actually already copied the driver over to a USB stick, a little uh, planning ahead. And you'll find that's something that uh, is a good practice to get into actually. So I'm going to right click and go to properties, drivers, browse, browse. And then I'm gonna scroll down to my flash drive. There's my driver and I'm in Windows 8 64 bit. Hit next, it's gonna install the driver software. And there you go. Now, the other thing that's nice about the AMD, uh, the AMD builds, you'll notice that a lot of the stuff is in here, but the thing you gotta watch for is it's using the standard AHCI controller. So there's some drivers that we definitely have to get our hands on to make sure it's going to use the, the AMD controller. So, first things first, let's get on the internet. Connect to my network, and it's gonna go ahead and verify the connection. And we're connected, yay. Next thing I do, I immediately download Chrome. Okay, Chrome is almost ready. We're gonna go ahead and make Chrome the default browser. I'm not gonna sign into it right now. But what I am gonna do is head over to the motherboard manufacturer's website. So whatever motherboard you're using, type it in the search. In my case, I'm on MSI. So I'm gonna jump over to them. And I'm gonna go to support. Close Internet Explorer and I'm unpin that. Move this over, I can close my control panel. And then once you get into support, you're gonna to wanna to scroll down to motherboard. Now you need download manual. Then you've already got motherboard selected, so I'm on AMD. I am on FM2, FM2 Plus, sorry. Apparently they don't make an FM2 board. Or if they do, they don't support it. A78, and I'm on the E45 variant of that board, so then I go to download. Okay, so here's everything. Um, as far as your BIOS goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So if everything's working, uh, don't worry about this in most cases. On some boards, you have to update it if uh, new chips have come out or you're having instability. Uh, so always check the motherboard, uh, check to see what CPUs are supported and make sure that your CPU is supported under the, the version of the BIOS that you are running. As long as it is, don't worry about it. Go over to driver and select Windows 8.1 64-bit. Here's all the goodies. So. This is the RAID driver. I don't have RAID, so I'm not gonna worry about that. I am gonna need to get the uh, high definition audio driver. I'm going to need to get the PCIe ethernet driver. And then the uh, chipset driver. I've always found this one to be a little bit interesting. So if you download the Catalyst driver from AMD, I find that it does a lot of this. So I'm actually gonna download the AMD Catalyst driver, see if it loads all of the drivers I'm going to need which it'll show you in the download list or you know when you go to the custom install. And then uh, if it's missing anything, then we'll worry about that one. That's the thing that's a little bit different about Intel. The Intel chipset drivers and the Intel management interface and the INF and all that stuff, that's really important. You have to get that you know, from your motherboard download site. AMD, not so much. So I already have already downloaded these drivers and they're on a USB stick. 
So I'm gonna copy them over and then we'll go through it. Oh, look at that. That's the cool thing about when you connect to the internet. The computer automatically starts downloading drivers and you'll notice what's really gonna be interesting is if it picked up the, uh, the SATA. You'll notice one thing happened immediately because I am on HDMI. The screen started doing the uh, overscan correction. So let's see here. Nope, didn't do that, but it did do the display adapter. But I don't have the Catalyst Control Center in here yet. When you get that, you can actually fix this issue where I'm, I'm cutting off on the side of the screen because it doesn't recognize this is a native resolution on this monitor. And a lot of times, even if it does, it still does this. So I'm gonna copy over all of the stuff that you would normally download, and then we'll walk through the order in which to install it. Okay, so I've already copied over the uh, high definition audio driver and the uh, PCIe Ethernet and the latest Catalyst driver. So those are really easy to get your hands on. You just go to amd.com close this stupid cookies notification that likes to come up. And then you want to go to drivers and support and latest AMD GPU drivers. And then there's the APU drivers if you're running an APU. So let's go to Windows 8 64 bit. And this is it right here, the Catalyst Software Suite. And then you just download that, 256 megabytes, and you're good to go. So minimize that and we'll go into my downloads because that's where everything would normally go. So I'm going to extract all of these zip files. Okay, that real tech HD audio one took forever. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I need to get this freaking monitor fixed. So I'm gonna do the Catalyst install. So just double click on it and launch it. Install, let it extract all the goodies. And here you go, ready to do the install. So I'm going to install, and then I'm going to do custom, and let it load up some stuff. Okay, so you can see here, it's going to do a few of the important components. The one thing that's missing is the um, some of the chipset drivers, like the uh, AHCI and stuff like that. But I'm still going to go ahead and let it run this through. Now, normally I would say definitely do your chipset drivers first, but it is using a generic driver, so we're, we're okay. There's nothing to really worry about here. I just wanna get the graphics in this particular case under control to make everything a little bit easier as we move forward. So what you will wanna do is download the, um, the full package and that's an 800 megabyte download. So you go over here, you're gonna need this one, eight or 794.7. So if you don't have a good connection, go ahead and set that one and kind of walk away for a minute. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and do this, but I'm not going to do Gaming Evolve. That drives me crazy. It pops up every time I turn on the computer. I know I can disable it, but if I just don't install it, that disables it. The nice thing about doing this is then when you go through and you actually do that chipset driver install, it's gonna be another Catalyst installer, but it's gonna notice that you have the most up-to-date graphics and audio drivers and, and the most up-to-date software. So it's not going to unnecessarily uh, install a driver and then you have to overwrite that driver again. So even though this is going a little backwards from the way I normally like to do things, I like to get the chipset drivers out of the way first. This prevents me installing a Catalyst driver and then rewriting over it with a newer Catalyst driver, if that makes sense. All right, so we're ready to restart. That's the beauty of the SSD right there. I know it adds a little bit of extra cost, but man, it is worth it to have that quick boot. All right, that was trying to pull me to some registration page and I don't care about it. So what I wanna do is go to the Catalyst Control Center. This is how you correct this overscan issue. And if you're using this as a home theater PC, this will drive you nuts until you figure it out. As it did me. I used to have a uh, AMD card in my home theater PC before I put the 750 Ti in there. It took me a while to figure this one out. You wanna go to digital flat panel displays and then scaling options and then turn off overscan. And boom, you solved your problem. So the next thing to do is, if you are downloading that, give yourself some time. In my case, I'm gonna plug in my flash drive. I've already got everything. Go to my AMD drivers. Gives you this little message, I don't worry about that. And you'll see uh, right here, I've got the folder for that chipset driver. So I'm just gonna move that over to downloads. And we'll pretend that we downloaded it. And this is gonna take a minute. It's big. All right, almost done. Hey, one nice thing I noticed, it got the time right on the clock. Sometimes the time zone gets stuck on specific time and I have to change it back to Indiana. 
which is Eastern time these days, but they still have a separate time zone in there for us from when we were in the Dark Ages and weren't with everybody else. So now you just go into the chipset driver and hit setup and boom, you're gonna go into the catalyst driver again. Everything look familiar here? Should. So go to install, custom, next. And then you'll see here that it's going to show that, hey, you're already running the most, uh, the latest version of this driver. And it'll tell you, it's already installed and up to date. So good, it's not gonna overwrite some of those things. So Hydrovision, leave that on. This is the one we want right here. We want the USB filter driver and the SATA controller driver. Those are the, the two we're looking for. So go ahead and hit next, accept, and let it do its thing. Shouldn't really take very long. These aren't big files that it's copying over here. Computer's gonna ding at you a couple times, make some noises, keyboard turns off, everything's going crazy. Obviously the USB worked because it just redetected my USB device. Doing stuff, stuff's going crazy. Are we done? Hey, look at that, we're done. And it's gonna wanna restart again. Hey, we're at the desktop and all the drivers are installed. And the cat came in the room because he's all excited because it's almost done. So now all you gotta do is finish up with the remaining two drivers that I have in my downloads. So the PCI LAN, or PCIe LAN setup. Tedious stuff. All right, so that one's done. Now the uh, particularly fun one, the uh, HD audio. Now there's already an audio driver on here. The computer's obviously making noises, but I'd like to just go ahead and give it the one from the motherboard manufacturer. And that's done. So guess what? Another restart. Okay, so now everything should be installed. So you can go to the device manager again. I keep wanting to say control panel, I'm living in the past. So double check, make sure that your IDE controller is now the AMD SATA controller, which it is. Uh, network adapters are there. Sound card is there. AMD high definition audio device and the Realtek high definition audio device. And you're good to go. So you have now installed all of your AMD drivers. So the next thing to do is the really fun part, Windows updates. So hit Windows S and type Windows update. It's the bottom one. And then you have to force it to check for updates. If you don't, it'll do this in a few days, if even that, it'll eventually figure it out and it'll ping you for it. You'll notice it now has 42 important updates that are available. So go ahead and install those. And this will take a little while. Uh, after it does these, just run through this again, go back into Windows Update, check for updates. There's usually one or two more that pop up that are important updates. Let it do those, and then you are ready to start installing all of your software and your games and your good stuff because you now have your local disk D that was already set up during the install because we uh, partitioned it when we were doing the setup. So you don't have to worry about doing that in Windows. So just drag all of your goodness over there and install all of your Steam stuff and everything else. And you're good to go. So that's it. Now it's time to take a look at the driver install process for Intel. Okay, so now it's time for the drivers on the Intel budget gaming build. And you'll notice that this is the first boot screen and it went to the tiles but we wanna to go to the desktop. Oh, that desktop's bright. And do immediately my usual and customary. So desktop icons, computer, done, done. Go down here, properties, navigation. And let's see, uncheck those, check that. All right, boom, got that done. Let's do the wireless adapter. So, so right click. Update driver, browse. This PC, untitled, this thing. Windows 8 64 bit. Done. Now you'll notice in the AMD build, we really weren't missing anything uh, for the most part. Missing a lot of stuff here. So we'll go ahead and the Intel uh, in install, as far as drivers goes, a little bit more important as far as the order you do things in and making sure you get them all correct. So that's why I'm gonna walk through this one as well. All right, so close that. Now you see immediately the wireless is available. Connect to mine. 
Verifying and connecting. And they're connected. All right. So just as before, I'm gonna download Chrome. All right, we'll use Google Chrome as the default, and then we're gonna jump in. And in this case, we need to go to Azrock. Go to the website. And uh, no thanks. Okay, so what we need to do is go to download. And I know that this is the Z97M Pro 4. There we go. Download page. All right, it's not the prettiest website in the world, but we have Windows 8.1 64-bit, so we'll click on that. And then here is everything. So it shows you what type of driver it is, you know, audio, INF. All right, then as you scroll down, you'll see you've got your rapid start, your smart connect, and then your LAN driver, which we're gonna need. And we're going to need, uh, here it is, the rapid storage technology driver, which is good. And then here's all of your other utilities that you can download as well. So I think I grabbed this one. Uh, but the one that you really wanna make sure that you pick up is the management engine driver and the Intel rapid storage driver and utility. And then obviously you need the audio, even though it's already working, I always download it again anyway to make sure I have the one that the motherboard manufacturer prefers. So let me copy all those files over. Okay, I've got everything extracted. Now this ROM file is actually to update the BIOS and I think I might have to do it. It looked like I needed to update it to bring full compatibility for this chip. I don't usually recommend doing a BIOS update unless you absolutely have to, but when I do read on the supported processor list in the motherboard's documentation, that you need to be on a certain BIOS version or later, I do tend to, uh, before I do any kind of overclocking or anything, make sure I update to that version. So we'll go ahead and do that first. Now typically they want the um, file to be in the root directory whenever you do the BIOS update. So I'm just gonna move it. And I'm actually gonna make a copy of this ROM file and dump that in the root directory as well in case it's really particular. All right, so here we go. I mean, it's detecting the processor just fine. Um, but let me see, does it show the BIOS version on here anywhere? I don't think so, but all right. Maybe it's in tools. Instant flash. That sounds right. Oh, it's just scanning the whole flash drive. And it found it. Wow, that was really impressive. Um, we'll just go with that one. Uh, sure, yeah. That was impressive. Uh, most driver, uh, even Asus uh, sometimes, and uh, most definitely on the AMD board, you had to have the file uh, in the root directory. That just scanned your whole flash drive. You could have buried that thing in there and it would have found it. Now, one thing I did notice about this BIOS um, when I was in here, when I did the initial system setup, is the fans are really loud in the system, particularly the front fan. It's, it's at a pretty high RPM. And I went into the, I think it was under hardware monitor, there was an area where you could set the fan profiles to like quiet mode, normal, or like aggressive full on. It didn't matter which one I set it to, the fan was always running at the same RPM. So I don't know what that's all about, but hopefully the software that you can load within Windows will give you an option to do fan profiles and it will quiet things down. Okay, so we are in the boot up point now and this is why I really like having an SSD. Computer's powering on, jumps immediately to the Windows boot, and you're right to the desktop, just like that. So that's the, uh, that's the nice thing about the solid state drives. Keeps everything snappy. All right, so we got the new uh, BIOS running, and that's fine. Everything seems happy, happy. Windows is automatically searching out some drivers. That's why you're seeing a little flashing here. Windows will do that. As soon as it picks up an internet connection, any driver that it thinks it's missing, it's gonna grab, and uh, you'll notice that the resolution, everything's already updated, so that's pretty nice. And I bet if we go into the device manager, we're gonna see, yeah, there's fewer things missing there now. So, the next thing you wanna do, go into the Intel drivers, and you want to do the Intel management driver first. So that's under management. Just have to note that uh, the, when the air conditioning is running, you can probably hear it as I'm doing this over the mic. Uh, 
That's why I'm really glad that my office is almost done because being out where I am right now, you can hear the air handling unit. It's kind of loud. All right, so that's done. And the next thing I'm gonna do is rapid storage technology. And you do wanna restart after that one. All right, let's go back in here again downloads and drivers. So now we've done the rapid storage and the management engine, so we can start going through some of the other stuff. So I'm gonna do the INF. The key here is you wanna make sure that you do these three things first, because it's gonna make sure that your SATA is running correctly and at its fastest speed. It's gonna make sure that the uh, Intel management driver is in place and your chipset uh, software is now in place as well. So now that we've done that, those are the three important ones. All the other things that are missing can now get installed. So the LAN driver, I believe, was missing. Auto run, drivers and software. One thing that is nice about going with this board over the, the cheaper gigabyte option, there's like a B85 board. Uh, Tech Yes City talked about it, and it's a really good deal. I found it as low as around $50 uh, if you can catch the sale with the rebate, whereas this board is $99. That extra 50 bucks uh, buys you the Z97 chipset so you can push your overclocks a little bit further. Uh, you get a little bit better power delivery and then you do get the integrated Intel um, network adapter. So you get the integrated Intel NIC, which is always nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of that and go back and the last thing is Realtek Audio. All right, so we'll go ahead and restart again. All right, so everything looks like it's going pretty well here. I can go in and check my device manager. And boom, look, everything is there. So your storage controller, you got that. And then you wanna go in and check for your IDE controllers, Intel 9 series chipset family SATA AHCI controller. So that's the one you wanna make sure is there. Uh, here we are, Pentium G3258 at 3.2. We have eight gigabytes of system memory. So now I'm gonna go ahead and unpin this, scoot this over, and I'm gonna delete these two unnecessary things from my desktop. And I'm gonna open up Chrome again and download, even though NVIDIA drivers are already on here, I'm gonna download them again anyway. I want to make sure I have the most up-to-date drivers. So I'm going to go to drivers, GeForce drivers, and look at that. Automatic driver update. GeForce experience automatically keeps drivers up to date. There you go. And we'll install that. I'm not going to create a desktop shortcut, but I'm going to let it run. The GeForce experience is really nice. It gives you the shadow play functionality and then it does keep your drivers up to date and you'll get a little pop-up down here in the lower right-hand corner anytime a new driver is available and it'll ask you if you want to download it. So it's telling me right now there is a driver update that was released on July 29th, so very recent, and there's that pop-up I was talking about saying, hey, install me. So I'm gonna go ahead and download the driver. Fist punch your eyeballs. Well, thanks for that, NVIDIA. All right, there you go, drivers are updated. I'll go ahead and close that and close this. And I'm gonna do my last piece of software installation. That is the A-tuning software. So we'll see what this is all about. Okay, so here is uh, ASRock A-tuning. So let's see what we got here. Tools and fantastic tuning, that sounds right. So let's see if we can get these fans to be a little quieter. I think my front fan is on fan header one, so let's start a fan test here. Okay, so there's the results of the fan test, and it's showing the RPMs being really weird, uh, and I think that's why the fan is so loud. It, there's no way for it to speed down lower than 1200 RPMs. So even if I adjust this and apply it, the fan still doesn't get any quieter. So that tells me I might need to dig around in my UEFI a little bit more and see if there's something I have to set to get that fan to uh, relax. 
So I'm gonna start the fan test. Let's see, because this fan is a PWM fan. So let's see if the uh, UEFI just assumes all of your fans are PWM. And I think that's the case because it's the fan, I can hear the fan test running on the Hyper 212. Okay, so you can see the fan test is complete and it shows all of the different RPMs that this fan can hit at its different percentages. So right around 20% is about where it bottoms out. So I'm gonna actually drop it. I'm gonna drop it down to 20% and I'm gonna keep it there until I start hitting about 40 degrees, and then we'll kinda, we'll go with that. All right, I'm gonna click apply, and now that fan is nice and quiet. So as soon as the CPU hits 40, it's gonna take a sharp upturn until it gets to 60, and then it's gonna get loud. So you can play with this and set it. The reason I'm showing you this is, uh, this is a nice little piece of software to have, and if your motherboard comes with something like this, I highly suggest you use it, because these are the little tweaks that you wanna do after you get Windows installed, just to get your system set how you want it. Okay, and then here's your overclock tweaker. So you can go into here and just do your overclock within Windows if you want to. Uh, it looks like all of the stuff is, is in here. Now, I'm not a huge fan of doing overclocks within Windows software, but eh, you know, to each their own, you can mess around with it and it's a good way to see you know, if you're gonna get uh, a stable overclock because uh, if you hit something wrong in here, the system will, will get uh, instable very quickly. All right, so we're back in Windows, and the last thing to do is uh, the oh-so-fun Windows update. I'm gonna check for updates, and there should be a plethora of updates available. 46 important updates, okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and install these updates. I've got all the drivers installed at this point. The NVIDIA drivers are up to date. The chipset drivers and all the important things for the Intel management software is there. LAN drivers there, sound drivers there. That is it, you are done. Windows 8 is installed at this point, so just wait for your updates and then start loading your software and your games. So there you go, Windows 8.1 is installed on two computers. And uh, I have to say, with every iteration of Windows, the install process gets better and better. I remember back in the days of Windows 95 and Windows 98, it would take hours to do the install, and then you had to go find all the drivers, and it was just not fun back then. Now, the installation process is pretty much automated, and drivers are easier than ever to find in most cases. So you just have to remember a few simple rules. Set up your drives during the Windows installation process, because that saves you time when you actually get into Windows. You don't have to go into the disk management utility and all that stuff, you're just ready to go and make your chipset drivers a priority. Get those installed before you do anything else. Get them installed before you do your video, your audio, your LAN, whatever the heck you got in your computer. Get those chipset drivers on there because that's gonna keep things nice and stable and get your computer running nice and snappy as well. So as you can see behind me, I'm watching a screen through a screen. I'm watching Tech Talk, so uh, it's my Thursday night tradition. I'm gonna get back to it after a few hours of the rousing and fun install process that is Windows 8.1. So if you found this video helpful, please go ahead and click on that subscribe button. That helps me out quite a bit. And you can also follow me on Twitter, over at Tech Uploaded, and I'm on Facebook. Yeah, who's not? But I'm on Facebook. Just search for Tech Uploaded and you'll find me. And of course, if you have a question or a comment and you really wanna make sure I see it, go ahead and shoot me an email over at techuploaded at gmail.com. You know the drill. Don't be a stranger. Check back soon.